Yeah, it's this thing. About for anyone that's working on something and they kind of need to see it. What does that mean? Let me show you, motherfucker. I found here there's like two more I need, but these are every edition of the book. Every time I wrote it, all the way from 2013. That one's from 2013. That was in 2015. This one's from 2017. This one's from 2019. And then I have the one that I started in 2023. And then that one turns into this one. This one turns into the original copy that I have right now. What does that mean? Well, that means it went through <clears throat> since 2013 many different iterations. It went down many different roads. I have a copy of this one that, in fact, went down a place that I didn't even know what to do, so I had to go all the way back and do something new. Things like that can definitely happen, you know. We're working on book two here. This might go somewhere and I might have to rewrite the entire thing. Or I might have to like, well, I'll only keep this section and then I'll go from that point. You never really know when it comes to writing what your drafts will do. You know what I mean? You're never going to know when you sit down in front of your whatever you have. I suggest using a typewriter. And you <clears throat> try to churn out your story. You plotted it, you thought about it, you made it happen in your head, you think this is the story I want to tell. And then it comes to time to sit down and write it and you just feel super stuck. <clears throat> sometimes the characters know where to go and sometimes you don't. Other times they get themselves caught in the middle of a situation that you don't even know how to get them out of. Now that happens a lot and it doesn't mean don't keep exploring it. You know, you're with your characters, they're going into a scene, and you're just kind of like, I don't fucking know what to do here. But you keep trying. You're like, I don't know, let's just kind of explore this scene, let's see what happens, maybe, maybe something will happen and we can get out of here. Sometimes something does happen and you get out of it, and then now you're just fumbling it forward again. Other times it just doesn't seem to happen. You just, you try, you try, and you come to a point where you're just like, I am absolutely lost. I had my characters, since this didn't happen, I can just tell you about it. They found some sort of hidden entrance that led them into what they discerned was a giant cave network. They just assumed that's what it was, because it'd be largely underground. All around them was rock, dripping water, dank, dark. And it was this system that they traveled through, and this system would end up leading them into a realm that was lived in by a group of people thought long dead. But there was a powerful odor that they kept smelling. The closer they would get to this place, it would get stronger and stronger. Until eventually they came to this point where there was this giant abyss down in these caves. This giant abyss, this huge cavern. Um, what would you call that? Like a trench. Standing out in front and you see this giant trench ahead of you. And as you look down, there was these buildings constructed in the side of the walls. And they knew, for some reason, that they had to go down into this place. <clears throat> and they, from that point, I remember thinking, uh, there was two things that stopped me there. One, I was like, this is the Mines of Moria. I didn't realize that I'm, I'm doing the Mines of Moria. I can't do this because this has already been done. As much as I really wanted to do it, I had a fear. And this is the, how outside pressures can affect you. I had a fear that people would read it. But dude, he's just copying Lord of the Rings and putting his own spin on it. And that made me nervous because I see how people butcher that shit. What they'll say about you and their little opinions about why you did what you did and... People can be pretty crucial and critical when it comes to that stuff, and I didn't even want to invite that. I'm like, no, we're just going to walk away from this, and we're going to try something new. 
So I literally had to hit the rewind button and then to the point before they entered there and I'm like, okay, something new. And I had to sit down and think of something entirely new and, and, and like, what could we do from that point? And it, believe me, it can be quite jarring. It can be quite difficult to sit and like, you might have been planning that. But there's many realizations that you reach and my thing I always say, I always try to like say to anyone that is trying to write or anything like that, you have to trust yourself and your own opinions. You have to, there's no other way about it. You can't, like you can get perspectives from other people, you can get their opinion about it or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, if you don't feel it's right, then it's not gonna be. And you, you're just lying to yourself and you're forcing it. Now, sometimes it takes a long time to realize that. Sometimes it's instant. My fears sometimes are I'm doing this and I'm like, what if there was something in here that I'm just like, I don't know. Like right now, it's it's always a gamble. I have a couple character perspectives and one of them is going in uncharted territories. I don't know why I'm doing it. It just felt right. I'm going for it. I don't know if it's gonna lead me to another dead end. It feels like it's about to. I'm just like, I don't know what to do here. Like, what the fuck is the point of all this? But sometimes those can lead you to revelations that maybe don't happen in that set of circumstances, but you can take what you just did there, you charted forward in uncharted territories, and you can take snippets of it and then finally guide them onto another path. That can happen and that's totally fine. You know, those are the things you gotta pay attention to. Oh, sorry, I had to take a shit. Um, well, what was I saying? <sighs> Iterations, things that happen in your book. Oh. It can be difficult sometimes. And I, again, I, I really don't know, because I'm not a part of any kind of community about this shit, so I don't know what most authors are struggling with. I don't even, half the time, I don't even consider myself an author, right? But I do know this, that my own experience has taught me that such. It's been very difficult to come about this kind of shit when you don't even know what the fuck you're doing. You don't even understand. Like, for me writing, I was always like, why the fuck am I writing this? Why am I writing this shit? I don't even know. I wish I could answer that goddamn question and maybe this would be a lot easier. And so along the way for me, I had to constantly self-reflect and say, why are you doing what you're doing? All the fucking time. It was just always this goddamn thing. And <clears throat> every day I'd rationalize it in a new way. Something that was always for someone else or something that I'm writing this for others so that they may blah 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 or I would constantly always have other people on my mind when I was doing this now the problem for me is our modern society is getting kind of weird about shit you know like psychology and all that I'm having a hard time even believing it anymore like well this is what psychology says it's like I don't know man what if that's fucking wrong I don't care what you think, you know, like, what is it, what if it's wrong? So, I just kept trying to figure all this shit out. And it, and the whole time I'm writing in my journals, trying to solve the problem, I always do the same damn thing. In the back of the journal, every single one of them, I left two pages, and they both just say, for you. I just leave a whole blank page. Like after reading all this journal, I just leave a blank page and say, it's for you. To this day, I'm like, for me to write as future me, or if someone finds these, they can write in them. I have no idea. My point being, when you write, do you think of your audience? Your potential audience? No, because you don't know them. Like, you don't even know what that means. The only thing you can do is write for yourself, right? The only thing that makes sense is what makes sense to you. You're the one that has to go and fucking read this motherfucker however many goddamn times it takes you to edit it. For me, many. 
I don't think I'm even done editing book one. I still am unsure in sections. But the problem that lies in that is, man, sometimes it can be confusing because you've read it so many times. You're invested in this story 100%. Everything makes sense to you. You just don't know how it makes sense to other people. And then you try to push it out to, to um, people and no one wants to read it. Because they don't really give a fuck. I wish they would just say that, but they're like, no, I just, you know, I don't have time. Like, no, you don't give a fuck. It's okay. It's like, just admit it. I'm not going to be hurt. I'd rather hear that than lies. But people are kind of like that. They're not really, most people, not everybody. This is just, I'm trying to give a general experience. And what that can do is make you feel like shit even more. And it's like, the writing process is such a self-loathing lonely like endeavor but there's only a few people in this world that like get off on that shit if you want to call it that <laughs> where you're just like you know what i'm okay with this i'm okay with just being alone all the time and working by myself and let my neurotic bullshit just like take over a little bit like i love it and so it's like you kind of have to be a certain type of person to enjoy this lifestyle if you want to even call it that i don't know if it would be considered one but because what you're doing is you're capturing essences of your own thought that you've culminated in the years that you've lived. You have took all these thoughts and all these ideas and you just form them and you, and you fucking go over it time and time again and hone them and hone them and then they start to flower into a, a certain self personal experience that you're taking that now that you just grew in your goddamn garden of life and you're placing it into this transplanting into this fake world that you've made or just fictitious story or whatever it is to be a writer and you're allowing the sensation that was you grow into this world as well and because of what you're doing that the multifacetedness of like your psyche you, you when you place out ahead of you and you charge into this world you have to make sure you rely on that enough because all of a sudden over here this plant starts to sprout in your new field and that is your perceptions of how you accepted the world oh i can take this and this could be a plot element this could be um a character like he's like perceptive the way i have been or you grow it and you see this plant's growing and that one's like the trauma that you experienced well then that must be what the hero goes through because i have too and i'll place it here and and to help it grow to give it plant food, I will use more metaphoric. Instead of my exact experience, I'll metaphorically talk about my experience so that it may flourish and reach out to different avenues instead of a singular one. What I think this, the idea of being a storyteller is, along this long road at the end result, is you're taking your own life, your own experiences, your own thoughts, your own beliefs, and all that shit, and you're making it universal. <clears throat> But one of the major problems, I think, is when you do it right, it's new. It's a little different than everyone else. What does that mean? Nobody wants to read it because they can't get into it. Because it's too new. It's too different. I just, I can't. No, it's not the same. I want my Lord of the Rings. I want my Star Wars. That's what they want. And what generally seems to be the case, and I'm not saying this is the road, but this seems to be it is nothing for a long fucking time until slowly people let their guard down enough and then they let this book in their life and then they're like oh my this is very i want the more they do that then all the phony people attach on like oh i like it too i like it too yeah i, I was into it in the beginning you know and then all that shit happens and it becomes a phenomena and it becomes a actual world what you did was you created a world from your life and your experiences and everything that you ever were, thought, is, am, all that bullshit. You made it into a world and these motherfuckers are now living in it for you. You've captured people and placed them in a sphere. From that point, you have a responsibility to take them and shape them in the way... Because at that point, you have to. I mean, you can say, like, no, no, that's not my problem. My, I make the world and this is like... 
you can pretend all you fucking want, but in the, in the reality of the situation is you made something and you're in charge of that now. That is like its own enterprise. It's like its own little business. You have to lead it the right way. You have to do what's right for the people, so how do you do that? You do what's right for the characters. You know, maybe you don't get caught up in like, well, I'll kill this guy off. And that'll be like a shocker. Or like, no, don't get caught up. <clears throat> These, this road, I may never tread down. As I'm saying all this out loud. I may just be a failure of an author. We'll find out. <clears throat> but I think it's really important to communicate just how important it is. Because I get so irritated. And the reason I want to talk about being a writer like this is this modern world doesn't take anything fucking seriously everything nothing matters it's, no it's not that big of a deal nothing really matters you're thinking too much it's too this there's nothing is that bad nothing's that good nothing's like cosmic or whatever the this the, the conversation might be about in that set of circumstances and i'm like yes things do fucking matter <sighs> things don't just happen i mean sometimes they do but generally, they are happening for a reason. From a car accident, all the way to fucking this. You know what I mean? Talking about a book. And I'm trying to say, in a long roundabout way, as a writer, you are responsible for yourself and the way you view the world and see it and how you can change yourself based on the bad things about you. Because you're capturing put on the book. But you're responsible for that because you're guiding people later. 300 years might pass, your book might shoot up and shoot down and shoot up and shoot down in popularity. And all of a sudden someone's reading it in, in fucking 300 years later. And the way they take that is in fact based upon the life they lived and, and what's going on in that world that time. But your message has to remain clear. It has to. There's routes to go when it comes to that. You can write it simple, like real simple. Not a lot like where you have the, the reader interpret the way the character feels about things. And you have the reader kind of like have to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to that. You're just taking characters and moving them here, moving them there, moving them here, moving them there. And they can form their own things. You can do that. That's kind of like how the Bible is, really. Or you can do it really extensively and really lay out who the characters are, do a lot of the work for the reader. You're just taking them on the journey. That's the one I'm doing. Not to handhold, but because, I don't know, it's natural to me. There's, there's avenues to do that to, to show the, who the characters are. But at the end of the day, that shit relies mostly on the way you are in your world. So when I was writing book one, I kept noticing that I really needed to just sit there and go in depth in their heads for a while. I had to. I could not. It was impossible to not, like, I put my character in the middle of a very dangerous situation. And something that was mentally trying and very emotionally trying as well. I could not be like, we don't need to jump in his head. We'll just say he's kind of down from that and, and he's, he's struggling. And, and maybe another character notices that. Like, no, I couldn't. I, I tried it in some of these old copies, but in the end of the day, I was like, I don't like that. It's not who I am. What I do is explore the depths of why I feel the way I do, and in that moment, I just sit there and fucking try to just make sense of everything. And I, I watch how things connected. I try to see how things happened, and for me, that was super important, and I'm like, well, that's my experience. I have to write it that way. I can't not. There's no way. But what it also does is another thing. I thought that in my mind, I was like, that also can help people use their empathy. Like, uh, like in a sense, I was like accidental, like, and also kind of like once I realized it on purpose, like, I was like, I can help people try to find their empathy. So instead of them trying to guess, it's right there in front of them. And from that point, they can make two and two kind of go together. And, and then we'll, what we'll do is over the books, we'll do it a little bit less and less. Less and less mental exploration of character from their own internal mind. More of the reader now doing it. We're teaching them. Like, just get them to do that. 
that's going to be fucking difficult. It's going to take a long time. And, and the point of all this is, that's what I'm doing. But the major point is you have to do everything that feels right to you and try everything that you want to do. We live in a world where it's like, no, numbers, money, and like we need to like, I forgot the terminology that I'm getting used to hearing all the time. It's about results and it's about like how many views, clicks, um, eyes you have or whatever the fuck it is. How many opinions like. Make sure you mention this in the comment section to even encourage people that don't try. Like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of results. I'm so sick of it. I, we've, we've done that and we're negating experience. We're negating living in the moment. Instead of reaching for this fucking thing, like we're just going to get a million views. Like, head in the clouds kind of thing. And I get caught up in stuff like that a lot myself. But I think it's really important to stay focused on this now. <clears throat> And as someone that's writing, I think it's really important to write what means something to you. If you do it well enough, if you try hard enough, eventually a few people and maybe more will like it too. That's the key of it. You know, I myself, for instance, I've been struggling since apparently 2013 to write this fucking thing. So many years of my life, I'm just sitting there trying to fucking make this fucking story work. And I may have done that for those years and struggled and struggled and trying to make it happen and like fucking up and trying again and fucking up and trying again and just feeling like a failure most of the time, feeling like I don't know what I'm doing because I'm a fucking idiot, you know, doubting and doubting and just going through the rigmarole of all that shit. And I might deal with all that. And then I might finally have it all done. I wrote the three beginning, <clears throat> the first movement, I call it. I might have finished that, wrote it, and it's out there, and like 10 people actually like it. And then you're like, oh, that hard work for 10 fucking people. I just blow my fucking brains out. Like, you know, you could go that route, but in my mind, I'm like, you know what? That's 10 people that know of something that I made up. What did you do? You know, like to someone that didn't do anything like, you bitch all the time. Did you try doing something about it? I tried and I at least hit 10 people. And you got to think of it like it's a fucking flower on the ground. You know, it's just got to have time to grow. You know, you look at your tree that you planted a year later, you're like, this is fucking bullshit. It's tiny. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, give it some time. Let it grow. It may grow withered because it just wasn't in the right spot or it may be perfect. You never know what it's going to be, but I think I get that way about this channel. You know, I'm just like, let it grow. It's, it's, it's just quiet. You're honing your skill quietly in the dark. You're not in front of millions of people guessing like, oh, and like trying to entertain, you know, like you're by yourself. There's 37 subscribers. Out of that fucking baby, like, 15 actually watch the videos, you're growing quietly. And they're witnessing it. Same with the book. A couple people actually read it. They're witnessing it. They're going to see it go through a change again. They're going to be like, oh, man, I remember when this happened. <clears throat> if that does happen, I don't know. That's all. F I think that's fine. I think it's okay. Like, do I want to stop working my, my day job so I can focus on this? Fuck yeah, I want to quit like yesterday. But it's not there yet. And like it can be hard to not get caught up in all that shit. But what I remind myself is this. Like yeah, I hate my fucking job. I hate it. I don't want to do it anymore. I want to be a writer. I don't want to do this shit. But you know what that job teaches me? People watching. Because I work in retail. I just watch people. And just see how they behave. And it teaches me things. And, and I deal with certain people at work that have weird fucking attitudes about things. They got to make it this whole ass thing. You know. Either they try too hard. Or they take their personal shit to work. And pretend that's not what it is. It's just business. Like. I, I get to see that shit. And just watch how people. 
become who they become and how they justify their lives. Like, that's cool. I'm learning something. I mean, yeah, I'm in a place I hate, but I'm in a, I'm learning about people. So it's like, I, I'm like, you know, you have to remember that. That's helping you write. That's helping form who you are. You just are a people watcher. And you're just taking that and, and, and rolling with it in your own story. I think that's key to everything. I mean, our modern world is just... Everyone's got this attitude, like, you just keep working your ass off. And which is true. But in a way that, like... You're barely getting any sleep and like you're working this bunch of fucking jobs for some reason to make just a little bit of ends meet for whatever. I don't even know how that can be. Like you must be doing something living in the wrong place if you have to work that hard. But all these things and we encourage like become this image of sacrifice on the stage of life. Look what they did. They worked 15 years for this company. You know, or look, they were 35 years, and it's just like, everyone clap. And then they ship them off, and they put this new fucking person in, and it's like they never existed. But you worked so hard to get to that point, and what? For this company to do what? Take all the credit, take all the money, give you the minimum that they can possibly give you. You know, like, oh, God, I've got to give them 15 an hour. <sighs> like, whatever it is. And then ship your ass off. That's no way to live. That's fucking horrible. Just admit you're a slave now if you don't, if you want to do that. But as a writer, you feel those ways and you get to write it all down, you know? You get to take that feeling and put it into a character and give him some depth. Make him fucking believable for once. And it's just a hard road, man. It really is. It's it's just, man, the, the only thing that really matters is what's important in your story. And just write what, like, don't write in spite. I'm like, I want to fucking talk. Like, don't write that way. Write self-story. People will pick up on it eventually, you know? It's hard. It really is. It's not It's not something that's going to come incredibly easy with zero thought. And, and, you know, I just stream of consciousness my way through it and I got it out. I try to stream of consciousness myself and it doesn't always happen. Not every fucking time. But I do try in those moments to really focus on everything that happens so that I may take part in this movement that is my life and along the way write a few things down I'm going to I don't even know what I'm going to do today I don't know if I feel like exactly writing um, I'm working on something I have to go to the store Harbor Freight and I have to get some things because of this we are trying to take care of this old typewriter this woman got for two bucks because it was in like horrible fucking shape it was rusted solid like just coated in fucking rust every bit of metal was just gone but I was able to clean a lot of it up you know I gotta find ways to liven up some of this paint if I give a fuck but everything I cleaned as much as I possibly could and I'm just in the process of re-oiling every component that's mechanical that moves and does something I gotta get this platen out because it's split and I have some rubber that I can reapply onto it and then we have that. So I gotta run and get a little tool to clean in those tiny little little fucking areas that I just can't access too well. Little wire brushes and shit like that. So that'll be what I wanna do today and I may write, I don't know. We don't know yet. Maybe inspiration will hit us and we'll write a couple chapters and or maybe we try to sit down and write and we get that far and think, I don't fucking know what's going on. And then we give up. Who knows? We'll see. But I will always try to write a little bit. A little bit of writing advice. 